<laughs> Let's see here. Did you hear the joke about... Oh, yeah, that too. Did you hear the joke about Ambrose, Reigns, and Rollins? <laughs> Dean Ambrose pulled out of WWE. Roman Reigns pulled out of WrestleMania. And Seth Rollins doesn't know how to pull. Hello, oh, everyone. Welcome. I am the one, the only Hobo Tom. And today I found something utterly amazing. I, Because I have a job. I'd like to thank all the well-wishers out there. Again, all you guys, thank you very much. But since I have found a job, and I'm going to have a view party. Um, hopefully, or hopefully I'll have a view party. Um, this Saturday, I'll be doing a live stream RRR &R show for AEW, AEWs, and I'll do my little thing later. But, but, because since I'm going to have a view party, I'm gonna have a, I might have some people over. Yes, I, I finally have friends. That's good. I figured, oh, you know what? You have to get beer and, and, and begin to celebrate. And I saw this, this can of beer. This is amazing. This summarizes everything that's been going on in Florida for the past couple of months. So I'll take a quick peek at that. So, yep, you have a trailer. You have you have a blonde-haired bimbo with gas mask. And you know it's Florida because over here somewhere. Or his finger at No, 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 no. Well, over there somewhere. You can see a pink, a plastic pink flamingo. That, and I finally got a reason to get some Miami Vice. Yes, it's always good stuff. So, but I'm not here to talk about that. I was texting a friend. I heard a funny joke. I hope you guys didn't hear that dirty joke. Very bad. But I'm here to talk about some. Oh, gee, I have to talk about Monday Night Raw. This this was a very average show for some reason. But again, as always, I have some shout-outs. Generally, the worse a wrestling show is, the more Discord tends to talk about stuff. I should write this down, too. That would be kind of important, boss. It's way to go. It's way to go. Mr. Priceless 666. You, sir. Been out of fourth six because you were in that six count.
everybody knows an angry fighter is a sloppy fighter. So he goes for some hair. Come on with a leg hook. Not enough. Conferencers, you sir are definitely a master of the air guitar. The chosen one! You, sir, are partying with your briefcase boombox. Then let's see here. Oh, yeah, that's right. Ladder match! You win by dirty pin. And Mike V, you can crawl out of here. So I know I goofed something up because I think the timing was a little bit off. But that's okay. Again, if you ever want to get your own little video shout out, you can see the one, the only Hobo Tom on Discord under, well, Hobo Tom. You can also choose to like, share, uh, comment, share, and subscribe, and you'll see all that stuff at the very end. And you can also email at hobo and girlfriend at gmail.com. And I am working on that girlfriend thing. She might be showing up because I think she's going to get her, her job started next. So I don't want to pressure her too much. Um, hopefully in August for. Triple Mania! Because I think they're going to have Triple Mania. I have a funny feeling once June rolls around, people are going to forget about Chronomania. I mean, we'll be back to Triple Mania. So, um, again, a couple of notes about this week. You're watching my Monday Night Raw review. Tomorrow is a live stream. Um, Impact Wrestling. Wednesday's AEW, the their go home show. We'll see how that goes. Thursday, El Vagabundo Hobo Dos will be back. He'll give his predictions about AEW's Double or Nothing. I, I forget what they call it this time. I forget if it's Casino Royale or Double or Nothing or All In or All Out. I, I, I forget. But that's okay. Um, Blackjack Tournament. Who knows? And then Friday will be SmackDown. Saturday will be AEW. So I do have to work Saturday, so I might be able... I might miss the first match. We'll see. Because I'll, I'll also, I also have to cook, too. Maybe I'll... Maybe eventually you'll see some of that food stuff that this guy knows how to cook. But let's focus on Monday Night Raw. Not a great show. And I think what killed it is for the first 27 minutes, it was nothing but promos and talking. 
AEW Impact does it the best. They honestly give you about two minutes of a recap of what happened last week. They compact two hours into two minutes. That seems about right. I mean, Raw compacts three hours into like half an hour. Not right. The ratio is not right. AEW really does the same thing for the most part. For every hour, it's like they get a minute recaps. Um, or they have, or or they'll skip the recaps and give like a short promo that is both a recap and leads into the show. SmackDown's kind of quicker; they're about five to ten minutes before they start the actual wrestling action. And and you know what? I miss Lucha Underground. They're the best vignettes. But that's okay. It's 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 time to join about Raw. Uh, there was about five minutes of Becky recap. Randy Orton comes in the ring. Edge shows up. Um, those who talk Edge accepts Randy Orton's challenge. Seth has a revelation. Ugh. Um, so then they go into the ring with Murphy. He talks about penance. I don't know what it is. Unless it's some over-the-top cult thing, the stuff Seth Rollins has been doing is a little too too weird. And, it, and hey, it might be the fact that it's, it hits a little bit close to home. Mainly because I was at a Christian... I was at one of those Christian schools for a while. Um, Catholics don't necessarily go bonkers like certain Christians do. And if you go back, you can actually see some of the footage I have from one of the services I had to sit through. So that was, again, kind of weird there. So the, and that's to adjust the screen because I've been like multitasking a lot this week. So my new job. So I've been trying to do some things on this computer while a lot on my work equipment. So yeah, this, this whole stuff with Seth gets weird. Then Umberto Carrillo shows up. He's, and of course, these off, this leads of us, leads us off what the heck is wrong with me today? To our first match of, of Murphy taking on Umberto Carrillo Dalegas. Um, for the most part, Umberto is the fast pace. He opens up, goes right to town of Murphy. Umberto is very upset. Remember, it was Seth Rollins that beat up his mentor, Rey Mysterio. C, C, C. Um, after that, it was a springboard kick, which is great. And Seth, for some reason, Umberto's picked up Sethitis because he has wrestling dis- dis- wrestling distractionitis. Because he was just staring at Seth. Seth was staring at him, and that allowed Buddy Murphy to get involved. Caught him. It was a catch knee. We brought him back in the ring. It was a catch knee by Murphy. To Murphy's Law, Umberto just gets beat up. But Murphy wins. <sighs> this was a ham sandwich of a match. Then Umberto eventually gets gets beat up a lot by Murphy. And then Alistair Black comes in to make the save because Murphy has a match with him later. Uh, there was a little thing backstage with Baron Corbin about how he demands stuff. He needs to speak to Lord Stephen Regal about that, about the accommodations over there at the Performance Center. And Liv Morgan talks about her mother. Again, so it's kind of getting freaky. Liv Morgan, I just noticed this. In these close-up interviews, she has like too much makeup on because it looks like she's... Pla- and someone else noticed this too. It looks like she has like plastic surgery face. Liv Morgan... By no means of the imagination should ever, ever have plastic surgery. Again, I, I think I told Nolo King this, but or, or I mentioned it general in Discord. I'll say 90% of the WWE women division look cuter without makeup. I don't get it. Like, if you take off... Like, one day, even... This happens. This happened to Becky Lynch. Like, it looks like she had plastic face. Ugh. 
Dana Brooke looks like she's gone under the knife or had like injections to like her lips and other parts of her body. It's just maybe it's because I've been watching wrestling too long and then I and I remember what Dana Brooke looks like in NXT before she started to make the big money where she could afford such stuff. I don't know. Hey, it just might be me too. But on natural, Kyrie Sane still looks amazing. On natural. Minus, like, the obvious face paint of Asuka still looks amazing. Peyton Royce isn't married. Billy Kay still looks pretty cute. But it's weird. When I saw Billy Kay in person, her tits didn't look as big. And I'll, I'll be honest. Shayna Baszler, without the makeup, she's actually pretty cute looking. And she's actually really quiet, too. Which is, she's a very quiet personality. Very shy. Uh, of course, in, introducing my nephews to her didn't, didn't help my nephews, but they were more confused and probably terrified. Whereas I was laughing at them, like, this is great. This is Shayna Baszler, baby! Because they have her autograph. Uh, she's famous. And again, you can see the whole door of wrestling back there. So I figure out my directionality. So, yeah, that. Close up of live, not good. Uh, then Charlotte Flair shows up. She calls out Ruby Riot. Ruby Riot shows up. I don't like. I feel torn because I remember when Ruby Riot told me that Heidi Lovelace was a cousin. Really, I'm no dumb dummy. But yet Charlotte Flair just like. Beats her up in fairly quick f fashion and not letting Ruby Riot really do anything. I'm not a fan. Of, I'm an even less fan of that, too. Because I remember when Ruby Riot was Heidi Lovelace, she was really good. And again, the WWE does dumb things every so often. Again, my princess, Kimberly. God, that was terrible. Now she's married, too, to, to one of the rascals. Boom! Oh well. But with that being said, um, Charlotte, ooh, those chops. Uh, Ruby Riot does a joint manipulation. Ruby Riot's more the traditional wrestler. Charlotte Flair wrestles like her father. And hey, if your father was Ric Flair, you'd probably wind up wrestling like him too. Then the so what I call the butt bomb, or, the, or this, I think this is this, this, the. Uh, the true thing is the seated senton. But no. It's just it's just the butt bomb from Ruby Riot. That was kind of funny. Then she tried the sunset flip. Wasn't happening though. Charlotte Flair got in the figure four. Then the figure eight. Charlotte Flair makes Ruby Riot tap out. I know they're trying to make Charlotte look strong. But at, at the expense of so many other better women. You could bring in... God, I hate to say this. Let's go take a look at my list of wrestlers. Well, Santana Garrett isn't there anymore. She said bad things. Um, who else is there? A lot of lanes there. You can always... I think Karen Q's still around. Chelsea Green. Um, MJ Jackson's who they could bring up. Xia Lee, they could they, they could bring up for a squash match. I mean, they have options. It's not like they don't. It's not like they don't have people that they could work with, and I'm sure they could pay some wrestler fifty bucks to say, "Listen, here's a hundred bucks. Charlotte's gonna squash you." I'm sure they would say, "Show me the money." So that so that can't be an issue. Again, it's just a. I don't know, a ham sandwich of a match. Nothing about the show is really spectacular, as you can tell by if you saw if if you actually pay attention to the title, you you kind of knew that nothing was going to be great about the show. And there's Charlie who does a interview with Bobby Lashley, and MVP gets involved. Uh, then there was. Uh, quick recap. 
about something about oh by the basketball thing that the Viking Raiders and Street Profits did. Then they had a little PV for axe throwing contest. And now I know that they're just a bunch of cosplayers and reenactors. Although I don't think the Vikings ever made it to Florida. They were the Spanish conquistadors. So um Diego and what's his face should actually have done that as as El Conquistadores and were the masters. I think there actually was a Conquistador 1 and Conquistador 2. Maybe in the old AWA or WCW. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll text them later. Um, yeah, so then Kyrie Sane's there and some Asuka party. Nia Jax spoils that. Asuka just kicks her out of the ring. Good riddance. Uh, Charlie then tries to interview Baron Corbin. Yeah, whatever. Our truth comes out. He wants his 24 7 I-95 South. I'm surprised I, I'm surprised I caught that reference. Um, belt back from Tom Brady? No, Gronk has the belt. Our truth is just utterly confused about stuff. And this sets up a match between Our truth and Bobby Lashley. Uh, this is a little bit better. Um, Our truth again, he just gets sent into the barricade and he gets in the post. And it's funny. Our truth tries. He does his, um, Cousin Ricky gimmick. But then Bobby Lashley just beats him up. Again, at least they show the personality of the wrestlers in the loss. So it's not it's not like it's a total squash. It's a little bit it's a, it's a little bit better. I mean it's not a can of suit match because you can see R Truth trying. Uh, he gets his moves in, he gets his character lines in, so that's pretty good. Uh, however, Bobby Lashley he gets his knees just like like a half Nelson gets R Truth bent over, delivers those knees to the midsection. Goes to a full Nelson, to a full Nelson slam, back into a full Nelson. R Truth taps out. MVP claps. And then in the backstage, like, Lana. Lana's just like screaming. I think it's the math. I don't know why Lana's screaming. Again, I think it's the math. But this match, yeah. It's not a ham sandwich. And of course, what happens in the back, Kyrie Sane and Oscar are talking. Kyrie goes one way, Oscar goes the other. And then Nia Jax just kind of is there lur lurking in the background. She sees Kyrie walk over there. She's like, it's like, Kyrie Sane, it's a trap. Don't go over there. Oh, please, Kyrie, don't. Uh, then we have our next match. I don't know. I might bump this match. Up. Ma match. Up. Ah. No, this match will say as is. This was just really a ham sandwich of a show. It's really a hard to. It's really hard to get excited over a dullish show. It's all very ham sandwiches, with the exception of probably the main event. Again, it's the main event though. But this was not. This was definitely not the main event. Eh, maybe it could have been, but who knows? It was Nikki Cross taking on Alexa Bliss and the Iconics. Uh, Alexa Bliss. She just, she just starts off on fire and fuego. She beats up both Peyton Royce and Billy Kay. Uh, then Nikki, she just goes crazy. She grabs poor poor Billy Kay by Peyton Royce and bangs her head into the mat like, like only Nikki Cross does. And then Nikki Cross started to take her vest off again. Take it all off, Nikki. That was the, probably the most exciting part of the match besides, besides what happened afterwards. Was, wow. Well, we'll get into that. Uh, then, of course, there's the double knees into the somersault knees by Alexa Bliss. The twisted Bliss. But then Nikki out, got out of the ring somehow because Nikki Cross, when she goes crazy, she's just crazy anyway. I think Peyton Royce was beating her up outside the ring. Peyton Royce makes the save, though, as Billy Kay was going to get pinned. And then she just, like, posted. Poor little tiny Alexa Bliss. Not once, not twice, but three times. And the rest are like, no, 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 no. You can't do that. Peyton Royce, you're disqualified. So we had Othel, the DQ finish. Pitt and Royce got DQ'd. It ain't good. 
And oh, I don't want to know. You know, Alexa Bliss hit Billy Kay with a flush with a flush right, right to the the jaw neck actually, but 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 to the jaw. You know what I'm talking about. Billy Kay's not the only woman to do this because I've noticed this from Chris Statlander. And I think it's just those two because those two actually look like women. But when they fall after being hit by a punch, they like go all spread eagle though. And I don't know. Ah, who knows? Um, so Peyton got DQ'd. Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss retain their belt. Billy Kay's kind of upset. Why'd you do that? I can't even speak like an Aussie anymore. I've lost my practice. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. But again, because of this finish, it was a dusty old hand. Fanwit! So what happened? Of course, they go to commercial break. And then you see Billy Kay and Peyton Royce arguing. And... Peyton Royce was trying to explain herself. Hey, but I lost in the middle of the match, and I just wanted to make sure you didn't get pinned. And I was so upset. And Billy Kay's and <laughs> Billy, Billy Kay's like, "Oh, you can't do that, but we lost because of you." And she just went, "Wow!" Oh, that was a slap. As you can tell by the title, that was her down under. Wow! And then Billy Kay. Are they going to have some some weird, abusive relationship between Billy Kay and Peyton Royce angle? That could be interesting. As long as they do it okay. So that would be interesting because immediately, right after Billy Kay slapped the, the, the lipstick and glitter off of Peyton Royce's face. That's the only way to put it. It was a full on. Man, you can see glitter fly. She's like, oh my god. What did I do? I'm so sorry. Oh so sorry. Oh no, I can't believe I used to be my best trailer. Oh my god. We're not going to have a resource anymore with your husband. <laughs> oh, wait a second. Yep, there we go. I, I got a little up. Oh, there's my cat, too. Where are you? You, you want to be on YouTube? You wanted to be on the video conference. You little fuzz muffin. Yeah, I'm talking to you. When I was on my video conference for, for work, she literally, like, like, flopped in front of my keyboard and, like, demanded to be man like to sleep on my arm but whatever so yeah so are we gonna see something between billy k and Payne royce are, are, are they gonna break up the iconics or is Payne royce gonna have like battered woman syndrome i understand i mean she didn't hit my i, I slipped on a doorknob Doorknobs and, and like closets, and doorknobs, and um, oh bath, bath water turners, they're like the two most lethal enemies of all women. Uh, I slipped and fell on, on the bath on the hot water adjustment what knob, bath knobs I guess, yeah water knobs, that and doorknobs like. No, I've never, ever, ever nailed my nailed my cheekbone right here to a doorknob or that. And and when they say, "Oh well, I hit the back of the cabinet," I've done that before. I've I've kind of gone up, but you know it's there because you see the like square on the top of your head, or it's like the back of your head, and it looks like like a little gash. And I've done that before where I've, where I've I think I had to fix something under the sink. And literally, you just jerk your head up too quickly. And you, and you can hit yourself when you're underneath the counter or underneath the table. As long as it's on the back of your head. The physics of hitting the front of your head while you're underneath the table is pretty insane. 
that's enough about that. That's enough about my little social justice rant and rage, which is probably too long already. So that'll be interesting. And then, of course, we all know Kyrie Singh got jumped. And then Asuka, she sees Nia Jax. Kill, Asuka. Kill, 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 kill. Yeah. And this was very woman heavy again. I don't know. It's not bad. If they did a little bit better with the creative, it could be more meaningful. Again, I just want to see Nikki Cross go full Nikki Cross though. On Byron Saxon, um, going nuts on the table, yelling at people, just screaming, taking her vest off. Just just going full Nikki Cross. This best Nikki Cross. Then we had Shannon Baser taking on Natalia in a submission match. Again, this match could have been so much better knowing these two. Instead, it just... Oh, I'll get to it. Uh, so Shayna starts off, or Natalia starts off, tries to do an early sharpshooter. Uh, doesn't get that. Reverses it to an ankle lock pretty quickly. Shayna gets out of that. Well, actually, Shayna started off by a headlock. Says, yeah, I can wrestle too, N Natty. Um, and then, of course, Natalia gets upset. Tries from an early sharpshooter, then an ankle lock. The stomps. Uh, Shayna Baser gets caught in the sharpshooter again. She tries to sneak outside. She uses the leverage to kind of pull herself free. Uh, Shannon Baser gets back inside the ring. Uh, gets a that's like a knee lock or knee like a knee bar onto Natalia. Transitions that into the Coquina clutch. Natalia taps. Shannon Baser wins in a pretty quick fashion. Then it was a pretty short match. The entrances probably the entrances and commercial probably took longer. So just another ham sandwich. And then Natty has a hissy fit. She refused to get out of the ring while the while the poor ring crew people tried to set up for the Kevin Owens show. She's like, eh, 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 eh. eh. I want to stay to your manager. That's what Natalia unfortunately reminds me of. She reminds me of like Walmart shopping mother. I want to stay to your manager. I don't appreciate the fact that I have to pay. Yeah, very quickly degrades into the Charlie Brown adult voice. She just has that tone and, and that look. And she stomps around, kicks the ropes. It's like, really? If you have that much energy to do that, then you should have petitioned. Say, say, please, please, big man, I know you don't like my young girl, but at least let me have a check for the meat. Okay, Natty, I feel bad for you. You're going to go off and have your 10 minute match. You know what? Have a 15 minute match. Shayna. I'm changing up the script. Five minutes before your match. Instead of a seven minute squat, semi squash, you're having a technical 15 minute match. And Shayna would probably be like, good. <laughs> so, well, that's as far as that goes. Um, then we have the Kevin Owens show. Well, actually, backstage, Lena Vega, Andrade, Garza. Angel Garza and Austin Theory, they're all there kind of arguing. Kevin Owens, then we go up to the Kevin Owens show. He's like, what the hell happened here? He's like, jeez. Well, I guess I can do a show without this. Uh, he comes up with Selena Vega and her boys. Los Ingobernales de WWE. Uh, she, she accuses Kevin Owens of being a coward because he refuses to get in the ring with, with when they're in the ring. Uh, it's like, well, I'm sorry, someone, someone out of fit. What, what can I do about it? Apollo Cruz eventually comes down, starts to beat up Andrade, and then the next thing you know, after the commercial break, we have a uh, Kevin Owens taking and Apollo Cruz taking on Angel Garza and Andrade. This was actually a pretty decent match. It's so hard to give a bad match rating to Kevin Owens because you know he tries. First of all, Kevin Owens is loud. His trash talking is like probably A number one. Um, 
AJ Styles can do some good trash talking. So can Samoa Joe hasn't been in the ring in a while, but AJ can do some good trash talking. Um, Asuka is one of the best. Nikki Cross is good. He he's he's Andrade is definitely up there with the trash talking. And oh my god, I couldn't tell if 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 Zelina Vega was a porn star boss or the business stripper. That outfit she had on. Those, those those stripper heels are, whoa, the sparkly just show off my, my less than bra. Whoa, again, porn star boss or businesswoman stripper? One person said both. You never know. Uh, so with this match, can Paulo just pizza on poor Angel Garza? He had he, he has such an amazing vertical delay suplex. The strength and coordination of Apollo Cruz is amazing. Uh, Kevin Owens he just stomps Garza. Then KO and Andrade get get involved. They trade blows. Almost becomes a little bit like an NXT match between those two again. Kevin Owens is known for as a senton, the true senton. Um, Andrade again he gets speed up. He gets some moves on. But then Apollo works over him. And then Apollo, Apollo is smart. He, Austin Theory got on, got on the ring apron. He was going to nail poor Angel Garza with an, he was going to nail Apollo with an elbow. So Apollo reversed the Irish whip with Angel Garza because he's back in the ring at this time. And Austin Theory nailed Angel Garza in the face. That allowed for a blue thunder bomb. That, that, that's what it is. From Apollo, a sit up blue thunder bomb on to Angel Garza. Angel Garza eats the pin. And Angel Garza and just turn around. They, they both stare at Austin Theory. He's like, dude, what do you mean I tried? And then, out, and then, so Kevin Owens and Apollo Crews wins. This was a cheeseburger of a match. And this is where it gets interesting because this is where kind of different story threads begin to intertwine. So both Angel Garza and Andrade and Zelina Vega both kind of stare down Austin Theory. So you have you have the, you have the Puerto Rican and the, and the two Mexicans staring down the poor lone Filipino who probably doesn't speak a lick of Spanish. Or if he does, his dialect is, that he's used to hearing is way off. And then Angel Garza and so actually Zelina Vega laugh slapped Austin Theory, and that was just the signal for Garza and Andrade to beat him up. So my first thought, uh oh, Austin Theory is back to NXT. But this actually led into the next match. So they beat him up for a while and just leave him like they're dead ringside. Uh, Charlie interviews Drew McIntyre. And then the next match, uh, Drew says he is a Claymore fit for a king, does his normal stuff. Drew McIntyre is so good. I think, I do think they're just giving the wrestlers bullet points because the way Drew McIntyre comes across right now is very natural. It's like, okay, talk about your match. Talk about King Corbin. Talk about what you're going to do to King Corbin. Um, say hi to Charlie. Talk about King Corbin. What are you going to do to King Corbin? And that's it. Figure something out for, 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 for two minutes. I can do that. I, Charlie. I can't do a Scottish accent. I have to do a Scottish accent like this. Because yeah, I got to claim we're fit for a king. So, yep. Again, I think they're just giving some of the better wrestlers bullet points. You can actually tell which wrestlers are getting bullet points. Versus which wrestlers are actually getting the script. And there's a big difference there. Um, so then we have Murphy taking on Aleister Black. Murphy comes to the ring with, with Tess Rollins and he does like the weird... Like thing. Um, Seth Rollins is dressed like Loki with a black glove. That's the only way I can describe the way Seth Rollins looks. And, and a black tie instead of a red tie. Um, Black, you hear the and he kind of sits up. 
Actually, I have the reverse creak in this shirt. Sometimes. But he just comes out, goes right after Buddy Murphy. Um, and then all of a sudden, the hockey start fights. You have a hockey hockey fight in wrestling ring. Uh, he try they go to the outside. Oscar Black kicks the post, not the bright, not the best. And then Seth takes away from the match because actually he adds to the match. His Austin Theory is all crumpled up in a pile in like a corner, and Seth just stares at him, offers his hand, and Austin Theory took it. So now Seth Rollins has his own trios. Maybe Seth is going to have more of a manager role now. I, I just thought of that. Indeed. And then with that, Black does the, that catch kick as Murphy comes off the top rope. This is a big knee. Oh, that was so vicious looking. By Alistair Black. And then as Black begins to lift up Murphy with his boot, setting him up for the black mask. Austin Theory, who's who's being mentally wooed by Seth. Seth just points towards the ring. Not to head. Austin Theory looks at Seth. Looks at the ring. Looks at Seth. Then he goes running off to the ring. Uh, interferes with the match. Hits the ATL on Aleister Black. So we have a DQ finish, but it told a story, though. So therefore, this is going to be, yeah, a cheeseburger match. And then, of course, they beat up poor Alistair Black. And we go to the Axos competition. All this was, it was an exact opposite of the basketball thing. So, yeah, the Viking war, Viking experience, Viking Raiders are very good at throwing axes. The, the, the two street guys from Atlanta, they're not good at throwing axes. Um, they throw the axe everywhere. I thought they were going to hit the horse for a moment. Then, like, you realize like, it hit, like, like a water jug. Because it was clear liquid, so it definitely wasn't meat, because meat has that weird, like, golden color. Unless it was rum! But, why the rum? Always the rum. So much disrespect towards the rum. Then the cops show up, and they say, well, we want to see where he does this. You know it's fake, because cause, um, Dawson just throws an axe behind his back. Yeah, that doesn't happen, period. And then Charlie interviews Apollo Crews. Apollo wants another shot at Andrade for his U.S. belt. Um, then we have Drew McIntyre taking on King Baron Corbin. And then Bobby Lashley, MVP, show says, hey, we just want to see what happens because my man Bobby Lashley, he, he wants a piece of this belt. That would be great. Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre for Backlash. Like three weeks from Sunday? That's pretty soon. For some reason. It's only four weeks old, four ish weeks away. It's weird. They have, a, they have a weird pay-per-view schedule, but I won't get into that. So now we have we got Drew McIntyre and King Corbin. Starts off with a collar and elbow tie up, kind of tests his strength. Drew backs Corbin up. Uh, he does a clean break. He's like, ah, I got you. Uh, Corbin eventually delivers. He, he, through a pretty good knee. She was like, oh, nothing compared to my chop. Again, those chops hurt me. They go brawling, actually, outside of the barricade, too. So they go outside the ring, over the over the barricade. That was pretty neat to watch. Uh, Bobby Lashley and MVP just really do nothing but stare and, I guess, take notes. Um, they brawl for a little bit. Drew gets low-bridged. It's over the top. Corbin actually suplex Drew McIntyre. Only got a one crap. Again, with this match, it was louder. Because, again, if they're, if you're trash-talking, all that voice kind of fills up that empty space. Uh, Baron's trash-talking is kind of low, but you can hear it. Drew McIntyre, again, he's he's developed so much as a pro wrestler. It's great. Get up! I told you to get up. So, at least it's something. Because I know you have the announcers on TV, but ringside, at least they're shouting at each other. Uh, Drew then hit an overhead belly to belly. 
So Baron Corbin, I didn't realize you could do that to someone as tall as Baron Corbin. Uh, Baron Corbin then ate a double axe handle from the top. They trade blows for a while. There was a gut shot into a future shock DDT. However, Corbin reversed that into a deep six. Uh, Corbin kind of started to pull his own moves. And then there was a Scottish headbutt. And then Baron Corbin tried to do his ring slide thing. However, he was caught by a Claymore fit for a king. Because the three, two, one turned into a one, two, three for Drew McIntyre. I'll tell you what, this was another good match. The, the ending three matches were actually pretty good. It's just that the boring first six matches were blah. Because this was a cheeseburger match. And that was a very ham sandwich raw. So again, I already told you guys the schedule. You'll see me again live tomorrow. I'm all in this video now because, whoa, it's getting long. Have a good night, everyone, or morning by the time this is up. Bye. Again, like, share, comment, subscribe.